What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and I'm sitting here next to Gersh1. And today we're back to answer your questions in an installment that we like to call For the Greater yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below, put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. That is what Grind121 um, did. Uh, he asks, could the strongest space marine single-handedly take over our planet as it is now? If they could, how do you think they would uh, go about doing it? So if one space marine... Um, now, do we get to decide from what chapter? chapter? Yeah. Or just like a regular run of the mill. Like not even a captain or chapter master, just a regular space marine? Yeah, you, well even if it was just a regular ultramarine, because that's like your most vanilla marine. Mm -hmm. I still think, well like you said, yes. I think they could take over the world. Um, not the way that you think. I think that uh, the fact that um, space marines are extreme tacticianers, they're very good tacticianers, and they're very charismatic just in their nature. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that's not really talked about in the lore because they're supposed to be angels of death. So they can't go out and they destroy and burn, pillage, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I think that especially an ultramarine would be able to like manipulate politics to take control over Earth. Yeah, and since most space marines have a British accent, it's done. Like, they just got it. He just has to like say, I am here, boom. Yeah, but the way that he would do it, I think, is that he would, um, he would turn a certain part of the world against another, create a war, become the champion of that war, and then gain victory because mm -hmm. of his tactical, um, maneuverably, maneuvering. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So he's gonna be like, yeah, the West versus China, the West versus Russia, the West versus, um, that's really the only two superpowers, right? Um, yeah. Well, or Antarctica versus the world. <laughs> it's just him riding polar bears because yeah. of the whole, you know, global warming and they're fighting back. <laughs> or like in that one um, fantasy movie, um, what's the one where they have like giant polar bears that wear metal armor and they can talk? Is it the Golden Compass? There you go. That. I've never seen it, but I've, somehow I knew it's that. <laughs> I watched the first like hour and then I was like, yeah, this is really... That's too much. Like, I don't know. I, I didn't like it. Isn't it supposed to be like the counter to like Narnia? Yeah. yeah. I watched Narnia. I like Narnia, the first one. But yeah. Bridge to Terabithia, though. <laughs> that was a weird movie. Because they're not really, they're imagining things, but they're not really imagining things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, polar bears. Giant polar bears, space marines, Antarctica versus the world. That's how they get it. That's how he conquers. Next question. Nicolo Rafael Ruiz. Who's more prettier, Sanguinius or Fulgrim? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, Sanguinius was the angelic one. Like, just looking at him, you could see, like, a glow to him. He knew how to blend in his mascara with his skin tones. He had the flowing hair. But at the same time, you look at Fulgrim, this dude was obsessed, obsessed with perfection. Um, he wore a lot of Fenty. He did. He was very vain. I think that's the difference though, right? Did he say beautiful? Yeah, we're okay. prettiest. Oh, prettiest. I think it would be like, Sanguinius is true beauty. Fulgrim is like... Hard work and beauty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it would be like nature versus nurture, kind of? Yeah, or it's like some, like there's some models and you see them and they have their makeup on and it's like, yeah, they look nice. And then you see him without the makeup, and you're like, whoa, what happened to her eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> They're on fleek, Gersh. Yeah. But I think it's kind of that thing. Sanguinius. Sanguinius' eyebrows were naturally full and luscious, whereas um, Fulgrim's were, like, kind of, like, plucked out, and he had to fill them in every morning. Hmm. Right? Sure. <laughs> um, He's a demon now, so it is what it is. Next question comes from Dago De Rance. If the warp is connected to all to all other universes, then why can't someone go to go to the and why is it only limited to the Milky Way galaxy? So, so it's not connected. So the warp is not connected to other universes. There's only one universe uh, that the warp is connected to which is a 40k universe, and it's only connected to the one galaxy, which is the Milky Way galaxy. So yeah. 
it kind of like closes in all the possibilities so like you can you can say oh well like maybe this universe can invade or why haven't they gotten technology from that universe yeah it kind of like gives you a a specified area of what type of things can and will happen yeah yeah uh, next question comes from Kyle Nowak. Will you do a lore video on the cacophony? Is like, it the noise marine? Yeah, things? noise marines, slanesh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, this one is by Giovanni Bini. Can regular Astartes be upgraded to Primaris? Yes. It happened to old boy Calgar. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't just a regular marine. He was a chapter master. Mm -hmm. But yeah, regular Marines can, Chapter Masters can. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Primarchs can get Primaris upgrades. True. Uh, next question comes from Michael Matheson. Are anti-vaccine people Nurgle cultists? Yeah, I can see it. Because they're, 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 like, they're coming from a place of like wanting you to protect your child and trying to instill fear in vaccines, but in reality, it's just introducing Nurgle's touch to your children. So yes. Yeah, next question. The Fool 06. I'm not sure about this one, but you might, Grish. Uh, did the Emperor design the Imperial Achilla, that two-headed eagle that looks like a two-headed Lord of Change? Um, I don't know if he adopted it from I think he adopted it from yeah. from like um, history. Uh, it's supposed to be thematic to the Roman Empire. Yeah. Because uh, and it's supposed to be. It's when you see the Aquila, you're supposed to think um, totalitarianism, because um, that's what it basically came from. Um, I don't know why there's two heads though. There's a story because one of them's blind and the other one you could, it has you know, has the eye. If you ever noticed. On the Aquilas, like one of them is blind and the other one, the, well, usually on the one on the right is blind and then the one on the left has the, the eye. I, I, I should do a 40 facts on the uh, Aquila. Yeah, I thought maybe like Techno Barbarians had him too and him conquering them, he took the symbol. Uh, it's something like that. Yeah, no, because during the um, Unification War, his uh, was the Raptor um, symbol. Yeah, so it was like the claw. They, with the claw and the lightning bolts. That was the symbol and then they changed it to the Aquila. But I, I thought it was because he adopted it from somebody. And then, any reason why it kind of looks like Zeech? Because, I mean, you got oh, a point there. Thing? Yeah. No, like I said, I need to... There's a reason why there's two heads and one of them is black, but I can't remember. So. Would it be kind of similar to the whole see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil thing? Probably. But somehow you have, like, the good and the bad. Yeah, probably. Uh, next question. This one is by... Gutter Snipe Pie. Who would win in a fight, orcs or raving rabbits? Whoa versus whoa. We've done this one before. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what I answered, but I'm gonna say orcs this time. I think you said orcs the last time. Yeah. Obviously, they're just bunnies. I think. Kinda, yeah. This isn't a question, but it's a comment that should be known. Save Brendan Fraser. What happened to Brendan Fraser? No, because we were talking about the mummy and Brendan oh, Fraser and yeah, Tom yeah. Cruise. He's a he's big now. Like he looks like he's not an actor anymore. <laughs> so does John Goodman? Oh no, he lost the weight. Did he? Who's a big actor? That hasn't died. I was say Chris wasn't it Chris Farley? He passed. Yeah. Martian Santa. He asked. Is it known how psychers emerged during the dark age of technology? Was it due to the natural evolution or purposeful human genetic engineering? Uh, perhaps after they discovered some old old one tech? Um, so humans always had psychic abilities that, that were instilled onto them by the old ones. Uh, they were activated because of the birth of Slanesh. It was like the warp got more powerful and all these little seeds that were planted in humans just began to sprout even though i've tried creating a 40 40k timeline and there's conf it's it's very conflicting information as far as what came first the birth of slanesh 
the Men of Iron or the Rise and Psychers. Like it's it's it gets jumbled in certain uh, texts. You should like cover that, but cover it all at the same time. So there's like three of your voices just overlapping. Overlapping, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just make it more confusing. Yeah. Uh, this one is near and dear to your heart right now, Gersh. Beatho asks. When are you guys going to get chairs that don't sound like they're about to break every time you move? Yeah, uh, I started uh, running a D and D campaign, and now that we use these chairs for that, so so D and D is usually like four hours, right? <laughs> Roughly, yeah. So we're, there's a lot of moving and stuff, and as you can hear, these chairs are like almost done. I'm, I was thinking of um, fixing them, but then I realized that Target has them for like five bucks. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to buy some, some more. But I don't know if that'll solve the creaking noise. I need to find, like, I need to go to Ikea and get, like, a stool. You know, I've never been to Ikea. It's, it's an interesting place. I don't think the hype is, I don't know, you have to experience it for yourself. But yeah, I was thinking of doing stools, but stools get uncomfortable after a while. What about stoops? Yeah, we could just record this outside. <laughs> Stoop kids afraid to leave a stoop. Next question. Pickle Rick, is Magnus ever going to not lose? Um, yeah, he's taken a lot of L's. But, um, if you flip that L upside down and put another L, that gives you a symbol. And that symbol means that he's gonna lose again. Okay. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, he... he it's not all a bunch of losses to him. He did do what he was meant to do, and he wanted to warn the Emperor. He did it in good faith, so that's a W for me. But, no, because that caused all the other elves. But he did invade Fenris, and he, like, burned down their gene factories. Yeah, so he, he's experienced a lot of wins. It's just the losses are more notable. Yeah. Kind of like the Black Crusades in Abaddon. There's 13 of them, meaning he must have failed 12. But, no, he's... He's gotten things accomplished with each one. And the fact that you're saying that really highlights how you are a half, glass half empty person. You need to be more positive and think of it as a glass half full or... A glass fully full of drink, liquid, and gas. Yeah. Next question comes from Martian Santa. Can demons possess Eldar, Orcs, Tau, Krut, and other Xeno races? Uh, so demons can possess Eldar, right? No. 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 They eat the souls. Yeah, so they can't possess Eldar. They can possess orcs. Um, they can't possess Tau. They barely register in the warp. Yeah, otherwise, um, uh, Farsight would have already been possessed. He's using a demon sword. Rumor has it. It could be Necron. And can Kroot be possessed? Yes. If they eat the wrong thing, then they well, become... Well, demons demon. are not material creatures so they can't really eat but what about because when you kill a demon it goes back into the warp right but what if what if they start eating a bunch of cultists oh that's true well i guess they just get the human side of the meat but i thought like there was a a downfall for them eating like chaos uh like chaos space marines and all that kind of stuff there they start to like become more animalistic and almost like if it's nurgle then like sick yeah they get sick yeah Quién sabe. Last question. Do you got one? Uh, this one's by Tyler Castillo. If the Emperor were to come back, would he dismantle the Adepta Sororitas since they're part of the Ecclesiarchy? But they're also part of the Inquisition, so would they get a pass? Yeah, they'll get a big time pass because the Adepta Sororitas <laughs> are... Excuse my French. Um, other people use Sororitas. What the fuck about <laughs> Sororitas. Um, like but, sorority. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they are probably the most devoted. Devout. Devout. Sorry. Damn. Other people use that. <laughs> <laughs> they're most. They're the most devout um, group within the ecclesiarchy. I feel because they are all about the emperor. Mm -hmm. And what's her face even talk to the emperor face to face? Face to face. What's her name? Dominica something something. Yeah, we got a forty facts on her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they would definitely get a pass. Oh yeah, St. Celestine's a freaking huge part of it, so yeah. Yeah, and her, her coming back is because of the Emperor and the Star Child. 
Dun dun dun. A connection to another one. A connection to retcon material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Those were good questions, guys. Thanks for sending them our way. If you guys have more questions, comment down below. And uh, don't forget we have a Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. That's right. Keep the likes, keep the comments, keep the subscribers coming, and we'll keep on giving you giveaways. This is the Sound Alchemist. Gersh one. And we are out. <laughs>